Welcome to another video of Straight Talk, the series of videos where I boil down a lot of the things which happen in the world of search and marketing and branding and give them to you in manageable sound bites so that you can actually do more, not necessarily with less, but certainly a lot more efficiently and a lot faster. And today we're going to talk about content. And the moment I say that, you know, okay, you all realize, I hope, that content is necessary, whether you're in marketing or search engine optimization or branding, content is the fuel that drives all those activities. It is a thread that basically helps you reel in your prospects, which then you turn or convert into your customers. And we'll talk about this and then sort of terminology about all this at a different separate video because it's an entirely different matter. And I'm kind of antithetical to these, but we need to speak the same language so that you can actually understand what I'm talking about. Content is also the fuel, sorry, not the fuel, but the, the conduit through which you get your messaging out there so that those who you hope to reach understand who you are, what makes you separate and different from everybody else, and why you are the better choice for them. Having said all that then, it becomes evident to us, I hope, that content is necessary. If you don't consistently put good quality content out there, well, <clears throat> you may as well be a shop in a high street somewhere that never changes its display window. And worse than that, it doesn't even dust it. Very soon you become irrelevant, obsolete, and easily forgotten. So now, hopefully, you're experiencing the same thing which anybody who listens to that might experience. A kind of anxiety to go out there and produce some content, and that's, that's exactly the problem. Sure, content needs to be created. Certainly, you may feel that if you don't create content every day, your competitors' efforts may um, drown out your own messaging if it comes to marketing and branding or they may overwhelm your own search engine optimization efforts when it comes to SEO and visibility in search. But that is only a perception. We are, as social creatures, and this is where behavior, behavioral sciences come in, um, we are wired to respond to what is happening around us. We are wired to absorb what is happening around us and create sort of internal norms which then guide our activity at an acceptable level. And sometimes these things go wrong because our perception of what's happening goes wrong. And that's when we lose our way. And maybe we could also argue that we lose our values. To illustrate this, I'm going to use an example from one of my favorite fields of activity, which is war and the military. And the reason I pull so much from it in my writings and books and examples is not only because I had the privilege to, to be involved actively in interviewing a lot of members of the military when I wrote The Sniper Mind. I was privy to some um, very original neuroscientific research when it comes to actually understanding the um, thought processes and decision-making processes of people under pressure whose uh, margin for error is literally zero, because for them it's a matter of life and death. So I'm going to draw an example from that. And I'm going to talk about the SAS, which is a special air service in Britain, a regiment that officially does not exist. And it is created ad hoc through a very stringent selection process to basically create a top level, high performing unit that only undertakes some of the most difficult missions that can come um, in, in a sort of um, military situation. And, and here's what it is, what I call the SAS effect. Because the regiment has had a unique history and they have a high level of performance and a culture of achieving the unachievable, of doing the impossible, they have a very clear understanding of who they are, what they do, and how they do it. This very clear understanding of their identity and their uniqueness allows them to internalize 
the values they expect in the candidates they attract, and then codify those values in a selection process designed to weed out anybody who is wrong in that context. They are different to almost any other military service in the world, in that they are prepared in any one year to take zero uh, candidates, zero recruits, if no one suitable is out there to pass the selection process. Now think about this for a minute. They are um, a fighting regiment. They're basically active in some of the most challenging theaters of conflict. They have a need for manpower, otherwise they can't function. And yet, they're prepared to get zero recruits if their own standards are not met. I'm not going to talk too much longer about this. Think about this example for a moment and then think how this applies to the content you create. In your head, I hope, you have a clear idea of who you are, what makes you special, and why you do what you do, and how you do it, obviously. And that should be reflected in your content. However, in the push for content creation, which may involve activities every single day, I'm pretty sure that you're willing to compromise some of the standards which you have in order to get content out there because you feel that's how you remain relevant, that's how you stay top of mind. And, and these are all real concerns. That's how some people will see you, it'll resonate with some people. You're gonna get in some people, if not necessarily all the people that you are hoping to get. But create enough of that poor quality content or perhaps not a sterling quality content and basically you begin to water down your identity a little bit you begin to become uh, indistinguishable from your competition you begin to become indistinguishable in your own mind in terms of your values and uniqueness from everybody else and that's how you get trapped get trapped like that and your content suffers your confidence suffers your perspective suffers <laughs> your work and your business suffer. So this message really is this. Clearly define the things which make you you, whether it is you as an individual or you as a business. Understand how then they are reflected in what you do by way of content. Codify that internally for you into a standard and be uncompromising in how you apply that standard in the content that you create. And if you do that over time, your content problem, where you feel that you're being overwhelmed, drowned out, uh, watered down by what the competition is doing, is going to go away. Your messaging will be clear, your content will find those it has to find, it will resonate with those it must resonate with, and those people then will become your people, your customers, yours, uniquely yours, because they understand what it is that you're actually doing, and they're willing to buy into that message. I hope this helps. I know it's a little bit wordy because you know, I don't want to sort of um, drown you out with facts and science on this, but I do want you to think about these things. And I spend a lot of thinking on how to uh, present them to you, and I hope this helps. Let me know. Take care.